very important from the practical point of view. Okay, because in this lecture I will put your foundation for the breath modeling, <coughs> and it will more or less it will remain same. For example, problem one. Uh, did you did you start? Yeah. Okay, you can start. Yeah, let's start. So let's start with the problem one. This is the problem one. I would say it is like the design of slab bridge. Oh, yeah, I did. So first of all, we should know the data, what data we have. It is the same data which we had in our uh, class problem, if you remember. The first thing, how much should be the width of your bridge? You want to fix it? We, we have fixed the, the width of the bridge. Yeah. The, to, the total width of the bridge?
uh, 1.2 s plus plus the thousand one point two s plus three thousand yeah, over thirty where uh, s is the span of the effective span of the slab so if you use this equation we got how much 400 400 440 so we decided something around 450 I remember yeah. Yeah. so this is the data which we have now we have to we have to put all this data in our computer model okay so let's move one by one yes if you want to push back you want foot path? One. Yeah, it was. But let's proceed with this. If you, I, I, I will tell you how you can add the foot path load. Don't worry. I, I will tell you how you can add any load on the slab. Median load, foot path, barrier. I will tell you. But first, let's start with the basic one. Okay. So this is the data which we had in our problem, and this is the set. Now we want to see the same bridge here. You can uh, start with a bridge template, but I will show you how you can start working from scratch, from beginning. I mean, you have nothing. Uh, I wish that my computer will work in a better or a perfect way. So the first thing, we will go and change the units to Newton millimeter. Uh, before I start, let me tell you, I already explained to you what is the difference between x, y and z axis and 1, 2 and 3. Do you remember? Yes. 1, 2 and 3 are the local axis for the member, like u1 along the length, yeah. u2 along the width and u3 is the height. Am I right? Or no, yes. sorry, two was the height no, okay. and three was the weight. For example, the load along two will produce moment about one. Three. 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 The one is along the length of the member. Okay. So let's start with the file new model blank. So the units I just want to make sure I put the yeah, units due to millimeter and it is blank. So the first thing I told you uh, define. In the define command, we can define many things. We can define loads. We can define uh, materials. We can define sections like I section or what type of section. Let's first go to the materials and define the materials. For example, how to how we can define the material? We have only one concrete strength, and that is. 28 megapascal. So we can, this is one existing concrete material. Either we can start working, we can copy, we can make a copy of this material, or we can add new material. For example, I can give this material a name. I give this name concrete 28. And it is concrete. Uh, now, if you have used the the concrete and you, you have used, for example, here if you see the weight per unit volume, now you have to give the accurate weight per unit volume of the concrete. If you see, how much is the weight per unit volume in this units? Yes, 240, it should be, if you are familiar with the kilonewton meter, so it should be 24 kilo per cubic meter yeah. or 2400 kg per cubic meter or if you want the accurate calculation it should be 2400 multiplied by 9.81 over 1000 calculate this is the accurate one Mass per unit volume, there is no need to change. Now, E value. How to calculate the E value for the concrete? According to the ACI code, there is a formula for that. Okay? 
you know, if you see all these values are for the steel. The steel has E around 200,000. The steel has E value around 200,000 megapascal or 200 gigapascal. 0 0.3 is a coarse ratio of steel. This is the coefficient of thermal expansion of steel. This is the G for steel. So, because you are now making a new material, so that's why all the properties of the steel has been there. But if you want to avoid, for example, if you have any doubt about this, what you can do, you can use this and you can start working on this material. For example, just click on this and say add copy of material. Now it will make a copy of the material, but it will have the basic concrete properties. Like if you see, the weight permit volume is already there. Do you understand? Yes. Poisson ratio for the concrete is already there. So it will it will make your work more easier. So I will recommend you to use this if you don't know the properties of the concrete. For example, for E, you can calculate E. First of all, let's give the concrete strength. Here our units are kilonewton meter and let's go back to the mega pascal. So it is around 27.5 mega pascal. Let's make it 28. So this is the most important parameter, concrete strength. And then the second most important parameter is E. So the, 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 the program is saying 24, uh, 24,000 mega pascal. Let's calculate according to the ACI code. According to the ACI code, the formula is 4700 FC prime square root. FC prime is 28 and the square root sorry, 0 0.5. It is same. 1 over same, 24. Do you understand? So it means, and similarly, if you want to see this weight, just go and check how much will be kilonewton meter. It's around 23.5, the same. <coughs> okay, this positive ratio for the weak concrete, this value is 0 0.2, and for the strong concrete, the value could be 0 0.13 or 0 0.15. Okay. This is the Poisson ratio. What is that? It's like a factor of strength. No. It's a strength. For the strength. strength. For the strength. Letter of strength. No. Also. Uh, axial, axial. This is the ratio of lateral over, lateral over longitudinal strength. Okay. You perform a slender test. Maybe you have calculated uh, the Poisson ratio of the concrete. You perform compressive strength test on the concrete slender. Mm -hmm. You can measure the vertical deflection. Right. You can also measure the expansion. And from there you can calculate this value. G. How, how you can find the G? The formula is E divided by 2 into 1 plus mu. Well, I'm not going into detail, but this is I'm telling you. Uh, okay. So now you have concrete 28. One material is there. Steel, you have, uh, if you want to add steel material, you can add it, but in the later on, we can see in the sap itself, there are two uh, steel materials like grade 40 and 60 built in within the sap. So there is no need to define grade 40 or grade 60 steel. But if you want to do, you can do that. Okay. What else? Define now. Load cases. In this case, we have to define the load cases. Either we can define right now, or maybe uh, we can define later on. For example, like if we have to define a moving load case. I will tell you later on how you can define, but the other load combinations like uh, for example, this is the command load patterns 
by which you can add different load, different types of load which you will use. If you remember, we have a strength limit state. For example, we, we designed our uh, girder and uh, slab for this. If you remember, plus 1.5 dW plus 1.75 into LL plus IM. So it means live load moving live load, truck or tandem load. It should be multiplied by this. The dead load of the concrete should be multiplied by this. And this is a squat load. So we have to add actually three load patterns minimum. Like we can add DC here. Now, in case of dead load, there are two types of dead load. One, yeah, but even for the dead load, for the concrete, there are two types. One are the self weight of the concrete like slab, and one is <coughs> the superimposed dead, like barrier, like median. You understand? It's already known. It is, it is like superimposed dead load. It is not the part of the girder or the part of the slab itself. Okay? Like, if you add one median, it is a dead load, median. If you have that dead load, you should... But this DC is called self-weight. Self-weight DC. If you want to add any extra dead load, like superimposed dead, super dead, or I call it SDL, super <coughs> dead load. In that case, we make this self weight multiplied zero. I tell you what is that? And click here modify. Oh, sorry. I should add. Ok fine, I add now DC that 1 If you do not understand anything, just ask me If you see here, I have defined two different dead loads One is the dead load of the concrete and other is SDL, superimposed dead load For superimposed dead load, the type of the load is dead but it is 0 but for the dead load of the concrete, the self weight multiplied is 1. What is this DC self weight multiplier 1? It means that you have no need to define for one meter. For any, you have no, you, you have, uh, no need to apply any dead load in the SAP. The SAP will automatically calculate the dead load from the section properties. Like you just give the thickness, thickness of slab and this weight multiplier is 1 and you tell the program that this is concrete do you understand? Yeah. So the slab will itself calculate the dead load because it is a concrete and the self weight multiplier is 1 so it means if you want SAP to calculate the self weight you should keep, keep it equal to 1 and you should keep it equal to 1 always if you don't want to calculate the self load by yourself but if, if you say no I will calculate the dead load by myself like you did for example that you calculate the thickness multiplied by the density multiplied by the 9.81 and you find out like maybe 6 kg per square meter if you want to apply by yourself then keep it zero ok you got my point or not? Yeah. For example, when we model a building or a bridge, there are many components for which you just give the sizes. Like size of girder, like transom, like cap beam. But if you make this one and you tell the type of material concrete, it will automatically calculate. Okay? But the superimposed dead load, why I put zero? Because this load I want to give by myself. You understand? If you understand, good. And I hope you understand. Now, any other type of load which you want to define here? DW, asphalt. Yeah, wearing surface. Wearing surface. It is also dead load. And 
act new load pattern. The load is there. Live load. For example, if there is any normal live load, just say LL and change the type to live. And add. If you are designing a building, you will be you will be having SDL, DC, but no DW, but LL. But in the bridge. Sorry? Yeah, it should be self-made vertical should be zero because live load we have to apply by ourselves. Any load which you have to apply by yourself put multiply zero. In any load which you want program to calculate, make it one. So I just delete it or uh, sorry more. Or for example, you can have different types of uh, even we we have a super debt. I should change this uh, type to the super debt. Modify so it will be modified super debt. For example, we have pedestrian load. If you want to apply pedestrian load, you should define the PL. Okay, and change to the live. Add new. Load. This is now pedestrian load. We apply it or do not apply it, it's up to, up to us. But we can define as many loads as we want. Now, truck. Truck. Truck will be what type of load? Let's see. Which one? Live or bridge live? It should be bridge live. Now, what is the message? Lanes and vehicles must exist before <laughs> bridge light load. You understand or not? Yes. We even not started the modeling of our bridge. So, I just keep it here. Pedestrian load, truck load. Once we have our bridge lanes and bridge vehicles. For example, I'm saying truck load, but which truck? There are many types of trucks. HS20, HL93, APL. I, I'll show you. There are so many types of trucks which are which, 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 uh, which are available in the code. Okay. So this is how you can define uh, no. Okay. Let me see whether we have uh, just one minute. I did not save my model. Okay, so let's see define load cases. We have these load cases with us now. Model, let's delete it. Model is for dynamic analysis. So these are the basic load cases which we have. Okay, till now we have done nothing for the bridge. Now let's start for the bridge. First of all, the most important thing for the bridge is the layout of the bridge, which I explained you in my previous class a little bit as well. Uh, the horizontal layout, the vertical layout, the parabolic, how to do that. Do you remember? Yes. What is the bearing angle S90? Okay. So, our bridge is, is very simple. Let's go to the layout line. Here we are going to define the layout of our bridge. It is basically the center line, it will be the center line on which we will build our bridge along the length. It will be the center line on which we will build our bridge along the length. Add new line. Well, how much is the total length of our bridge? Initial station 0. If you want to start your bridge from 0, 0, 0, put here 0. And if you want to end station, the total length of your bridge, how much? 8,000. 8,000. Okay, you can also see it here as well. So this is the total length, but if you want, for example, if you want to, for example, maybe I will give you one assignment, maybe, to design a continuous bridge. For example, if I say, the span of the bridge is 18, uh, 16 meters, for example. And 
I want to add a support midway. How I can do that? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The bridge or bridge is like 24 meters span, slab bridge. A metro station. A slab bridge which is 24 meter long and after every 8 meter I will put the support. What is the support? Support I told you is known as bent. What is bent? The cap beam with two piers like this. The cap beam with the two piers is basically a bent. Should I tell you how we can do that? For example, you want to design a continuous bridge with two supports, two bends. How you can do that? Because it's the center line, you have to tell the program that it is continuous or there are three spans. How you can do that? Please see. We will we will come back. This is not our original problem, but this is just for the extra. What we will do? You will say 24,000 the total length. If you are designing a continuous bridge, 24,000. Okay. And here you will add one station. First, I should uh, select the from here straight. Add previous bearing to the station. Okay. If you see one point is added here. Or the other way, you can also add a vent later on. But this is the one way. So it means now you have how many stations? Four. One, two, three, and four. Okay. So at these locations we will add bends. Yes. Why you define it in the horizontal left? Why we didn't define it in the vertical? We should. We should also uh, in the horizontal layout. Why I define the horizontal layout? Because uh, I want to give the slope. For example, if your bridge is flat, vertical layout is basically the profile, vertical profile of your bridge. Okay? The horizontal layout is the horizontal layout of the bridge. If you want to give, you just added a station. Okay? But you don't want to if you give any value for example you give like 5 degree station 2 or the angle value it will move to the 5 degree but if you keep it 0 it will be it will be there so adding more points give you more flexibility but it does not mean that you should give the angles this is what I wanted, wanted to say do you understand what I am saying? well if you are not comfortable, go to the vertical layout and add the same stations. This is just for the sake of example. If you want to add bent later on, you can also do it later on. Okay, I, let, I, I will also tell you how you can do it later on. For example, just keep it 8000, go back. 